Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Nice to see you all. Hope you had a good week so far. Um, just, it's just nice to see all your faces again. Um, tonight's our uh, Bible Bowl and devotional for, uh, um, for March. Um, as you've heard, it's going to be people, places, and things in the Bible. I think you guys will find it. It'll, it'll be pretty easy looking at, over the questions again. Um, uh, before we get started uh, with a prayer, is there any anything that needs to be announced or any additions to the prayer list that anyone knows of? Nothing? Well, that's a good thing. Um, will you join me in prayer? <clears throat> Our Father, thank you for allowing us to be here this evening together as a family, united in Christ, part of thy kingdom, purchased by the body and blood of thy Son. We thank you so very much for the blessings which you've enjoyed throughout this day. We thank you for giving us another day of life, a day for us to know that you are God over all, the source of every good thing, and that your Son Jesus our Lord and our Savior came down this earth to show us your nature, to be a reflection of your glory, and to offer salvation unto all men. Father, again, as we go through the service and devotional this night, we pray that it would strengthen us and equip us to deal with the coming days, that we always remember that every good and perfect thing comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. I didn't... Uh... I forgot to mention to Frank before we started our prayer, um, Eula took a fall at the home this week and um, she's got a huge bump on the back of her head and it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a mess. They took her to the hospital. I don't believe they put any staples or stitches in, uh, but it was a pretty good size lump and just a, kind of a bloody mess on the top of her head. So just keep her in her prayers, your prayers. She's, uh, she's not feeling too good with, uh, with a head, head bump. So she's back at the home again? She, she is back in the home, back in her room, um, and having visitors if you want to go by and see her. So still in room, room six. Um, our first song this evening is going to be number 603, 603, Sweet is the Promise. <clears throat> 603, Sweet is the promise, I will not forget thee. Nothing can molest or turn my soul away. E'en though the night be dark within the valley, just beyond the shining and eternal day, I will not forget thee or leave thee. In my hands I'll hold thee, in my arms I'll fold thee, I will not forget thee or leave thee. I am thy Redeemer, I will care for thee. Trusting the promise, I will not forget thee. Onward will I go with songs of joy and love. Though earth despise me, Though my friends forsake me, I shall be remembered in my home above. I will not forget thee or leave thee. In my hands I'll hold thee, in my arms I'll fold thee. I will not forget. 
forget thee or leave thee. I am thy Redeemer, I will care for thee. When at the golden portals I am standing, all my tribulations, all my sorrows pass. How sweet to hear the blessed proclamation, enter faithful servant, welcome home at last. I will not forget thee or leave thee, in my hands I'll hold thee, in my arms I'll fold thee, I will not forget thee or leave thee. I am thy Redeemer, I will care for thee. Amen. Our next song will be number 378. 378. Just a few more days. Three, seven, eight. Just a few more days to be filled with grace and to tell the old, old story. Then when twilight falls and my Savior calls, I shall go to Him in glory. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down and with Jesus reign forever. Just a few more years with their toil and tears and the journey will be ended. Then I'll be with him where the tide of time with eternity is blended. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down and with Jesus reign forever. Though the hills be steep and the valleys deep with no flowers my way adorning. Though the night be lone and my rest a stone, joy awaits me in the morning. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down and with Jesus reign forever. What a joy twill be when I wake to see him for whom my heart is burning. Never more to sigh, never more to die, for that day my heart is yearning. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown, where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down, and with Jesus reign forever. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 28. I had one of those days today where I don't know why things were happening. I don't know what I was going to do with it. And I came across this this afternoon. And starting in verse 28, and my heading says, more than conquerors. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those who he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, <clears throat> is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we have fa faced, we faced death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we were more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. The things that happened today to me, they can't separate me as long as we stay focused. We are more than conquerors. Open your song books to page 624, 624. The church is one foundation, 624. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is the new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, takes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace in due. Number four, mid toils and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed and great 
the church victorious shall be the church at rest. 843, page 843. As a deer pants for the waters, O oh my soul, longeth after thee. You alone are my heart desire and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. I want you more than gold and silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Make sure I don't hand the one of the answers out. Okay, everybody have pencils and pens and everything you need? All right, here we go. Number one, I am the first king of Israel. Who am I? A, David, B, Ahab, C, Samuel, or D, Saul? Number two, Shem, Ham, and I are Noah's sons. Uh, who am I? A. Joshua, B. Jehoshaphat, C. Japheth, D. Jacob. Three, I was also known as Levi. Who am I? A. Mark, B. Matthew, C. Matthias, D. Methuselah. Number four, I am Joshua's father. Who am I? A. Nod, B. Nimrod, C, Naaman, or D, none. Number five. Joseph was forced to flee from my wife. Who am I? A, Pharaoh, 
B, Potiphar, C, Darius, D, Esarhaddon. Number six, I am Jacob's first wife. Who am I? A, Rachel, B, Deborah, C, Sarah, or D, Leah. Number seven, I am a giant and I was killed with a smooth stone. Who am I? A, Eglon, B, Leviathan, C, Goliath, or D, Behemoth. Okay, that's it for the people. We're going to go on to the, um, to the places, places of the Bible. Number eight, Jesus bought, um, excuse me, Judas bought this place after betraying Jesus. Its name means field of blood. What is the biblical name? A, Akko, B, Akmathia, C, Akwadama, or D, Akor. Number nine, this Galilean village was where Jesus performed his first miracle. A, Camo, B, Calvary, C, Calno, or D, Cana. Number 10, this is the place in Judah where Samson killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. A, Libya, B, Lehi, C, Lebanon, or D, Lasha. Number 11. This is the place where Job lived. A, Uma, B, Ur, C, Uz, or D, Uzza. Number 12. This place was Abram's homeland. A, Uz, B, Ur, C, Moriah, or D, Judah. Number 13. Instead of obeying God, Jonah tried to flee to this place. Is it A, Tarshish, B, Nineveh, C, Malta, or D, Timbuktu? Number 14. This was the place God sent Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. A, Egypt, B, Samaria, C, Moriah, or D, Moab. Number 15, the people ate this for 40 years prior to entering in to the promised land. A, unleavened bread, B, figs, C, manna, or D, locusts and honey. Number 16, David played this musical instrument to soothe Saul. Did he play an A, a flute, B, a harp, C, a horn, or D, a fiddle? Number 17, which one of these things were inside the Ark of the Covenant? A, Aaron's rod, B, a golden chalice, C, David's sling, or D, Jacob's bones. Number 18, the Israelites were forced to make bricks without this. A, water, B, sand, C, tools, or D, straw. Number 19, John Jonathan, <laughs> my proofreader didn't have his right glasses on. Jonathan used these to send David a message. A, pigeons. B, arrows. C, torches. Or D, drums. Number 20. Ephesians were told to put this on to enable them to withstand the devil's schemes. A, an ephod. B, a white robe. C, a crown of righteousness, or D, the full armor of God. Number 21, Gideon used this to seek a sign from God. A, a fleece, B, a candle, C, wine, or D, a scroll. 
And then if any of you need extra credit, number 21, 22 would be extra credit. Uh, Jael, Heber's wife, used this to kill Caesarea while he slept. Was it A, a sword, B, a nail, C, a spear, or D, a tent peg? That wasn't so bad, was it? Could be a lot of hundreds, I think. Okay, number one, I am the first king of Israel. Who am I? Saul, D, Saul. Um, number two, Shem, Ham, and I are no of sons. Who am I? C, J, Japheth. Number three, I was also known as Levi. Who am I? B, Matthew. Four, I am Joshua's father. Who am I? D, D, none. D, none. D. Number five, Joseph was forced to flee from my wife. Who am I? B, Potiphar. That's correct. Number six, I am Jacob's first wife. Who am I? D, Leah. I am a giant and was killed with a smooth stone. Who am I? C. Goliath. Um, Judas bought this place after betraying Jesus. It means field of blood. What is its biblical name? C. C. Aquadama. Number nine. This Galilean village was where Jesus performed his first miracle. D. Cana. Number 10, this is the place in Judah where Samson killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. B. Lehi. Number 11, uh, this is the place where Job lived. C. Uz. Uz. C. Uz. Number 12, this is Abraham's, Abram's homeland. B, Ur. Number 13, instead of obeying God, Jonah tried to flee to this place. A, Tarshish, right. Number 14, this was the place God sent Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. C, Moriah. 15. The people ate this for 40 years prior to entering into the promised land. C. Manna. 16. David played this musical instrument to soothe Saul. B. Harp. 17. Which one of these things were inside the Ark of the Covenant? A. Aaron's, Aaron's rod. Which, which bud? Aaron's rod. A. Number 18. The Israelites were forced to make bricks without this. D. Right, straw. Jonathan used these to send David a message. B. Arrows. The Ephesians were told to put this on. Number 20, excuse me. Ephesians were told to put this on to enable them to withstand the devil's, devil's schemes. D, the full armor of God. Gideon used this to seek a sign from God. A, fleece. And then the extra credit. Uh, Jael, Heber's wife, used this to kill Caesarea while he slept. D, a tent pig. That's the tent pig. That's pretty, pretty harsh right there. Okay, uh, any hundreds? None? Uh oh, I'm, oh, right there in the back, Eric, 100. Mi missed one? <laughs> oh, I got two over here. Okay, okay, not bad. Um, okay, well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.
Good evening, everyone. Open your psalm books, number 824. 824. I'll fly away. Eight twenty four. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, O oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Mark your psalm books at 826. I'll be listening. 826. Mark your song books there. We still have a little bit of time left. Let's sing another song. <clears throat> I gotta find one. Do number 761, where he leads, I'll follow. <clears throat> 761. Oh, our invitation after the song. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow Jesus every Is a tender love Jesus hath shown, sweeter far than any love that mortals have known. Kind to the erring one, faithful is he. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads, I'll follow. Follow. Jesus every day. List to his loving words, come unto me. Weary, heavy laden, there is sweet rest for thee. Trust in his promises, faithful and sure. 
Lean upon the Savior, and thy soul is secure. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow Jesus every Proverbs chapter 30, Agur, the son of Jacob, the oracle, makes a request of God. He says in, in uh, verse 7, Two things I asked of you, do not refuse me before I die. Keep deception and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is my portion. That I not be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? that I not be in want and steal and profane the name of my God. He asked for two things only, to keep lies and deception from him and to give him neither poverty nor riches. Those are interesting requests, right? I don't know that very many in our modern society with given the chance to ask anything they want, would ask for those two things, right? I mean, just think about it. You know, you ask people, what would you do if you had been in Aladdin's shoes, right? And you had three wishes. Well, we know what two of Agar's were. But if we think about it, this would be a very peaceful life, would it not? A life where we don't have to worry or wonder where we stand with people. We don't have to worry or wonder about what people might be thinking or saying about us, what they might be plotting against us even. And a life where we have enough. Nobody ever seems to have enough, right? And that's really what it comes down to is it's not really a question of monetary satisfaction. It's just a matter of satisfaction. Now there are limits to this. But again, Edgar gives us those limits, at least as he sees them, right? He doesn't want poverty or riches, but just his portion. Well, he doesn't want to be overly full and deny the Lord. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? We usually think, well, we need to our lives to be full. We, we, we think of hunger as a negative, especially in a society like ours where you can eat pretty much whatever you want, whenever you want, right? He's, Edgar says there's a place for hunger. A place to be reminded of where our food comes from. But he doesn't want to be hungry all the time because that brings other problems, doesn't it? He says, do not give me poverty, uh, or do not, let me not be in want, lest I steal. There's a middle ground there somewhere. That's where we need to live. That's where we need to find ourselves. We need to find ourselves in a place free of deception, in a place that we are still hungry but not starving. A place where 
We're always reminded where those blessings come from, but not, not a place of desperation where we might do something that harms the name of God. And I find that an interesting way of Agur to phrase this as well. Not that his actions would be the result of God's blessings or pulling thereof, they would be his own. But his concern is the fallout of those actions. Seemingly, people know that he is a man of God. And so if he were to transgress, if he were to harm another by stealing, he would harm the name of God. We see, by the way, similar things in the New Testament. Paul, for example, says that we should pray for our leaders so that we can lead quiet and peaceable lives. That's a quiet and peaceable life to me. A life without deceit and a life where there is enough. Right? Some things to think about this evening as we think about maybe where we stand, as we think about maybe life in general. This last Sunday, I spoke Sunday morning about our giving and our, our connection to money. This kind of ties in, and maybe that's why it came to my mind. This idea of having enough. Paul talks about contentment also in the New Testament. How he lit, learned to live with an abundance, how he learned to live with very little. Ultimately, it came down to learning. So while Agur is asking God for these blessings, we also see that sometimes it's on us to recognize the blessings for what they are. See, there are steps you and I can do to lead this type of life. Number one, we can be people without deceit and deception. And then we can choose to spend our time with those with whom we know we can trust. We can also learn maybe to lower our bar of what is enough. Or maybe learn to ask for help on either side. Because even as he points out, there is danger both in a life of excess and a life of want. So maybe we need, sometimes need a little bit of outside intervention. But I hope that we all want this type of life, a life of peace, a life of quiet, a life of devotion. However it is that you maybe phrase it, this is one man's way of doing so. But I hope that you want a life that is at peace with God and that, rather than profaning the name, brings glory to it. That is our goal as Christians, right? And so, if you have need this evening, if, if maybe there's something in your life that is troubling you, if you're having a problem, if it's personal, public, or somewhere in between, we're here to help to help you to have a life of devotion, a life of glorification, first of God, and then he will in turn glorify you in heaven. So if we can help you this evening in any way, please let us know as we stand and as we sing. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere 
listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my robe is white when he calls me, if my robe is white, I will hear. If my robe is white when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Just a few announcements before we leave tonight. Um, I'm double, check, bleh, double checking the dates here. All right, cool. Uh, April 9th is craft day for YBC. Uh, over here, it says a date change. Uh, craft day for YBC will be from the 9th to the 12th on April 9th. I assume this is the date change. Yes, okay. So April 9th, uh, craft day for YBC. Uh, April 12th, the men's meeting. Uh, is that still good to go? All right, cool. Uh, April 23rd, baby shower for Leia Grillioni. I hope I said that right. Um, and April 24th is birthday fellowship. Uh, do we have a theme for that? No? Potluck? Okay, cool. Theme for that is potluck. Comfort food. Okay, I got a got a thing. Comfort food. That's the theme. Uh, Bible class at nine thirty on Sunday. Worship at ten thirty. Uh, back here next week at seven for Bible class. Is there anything I missed? If you'll please pray with me. Dear Lord God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful evening that you have given us. We ask that as we now go from this place out into the world that we take what we have heard and learned here and apply it to our lives to better serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.